Oh, welcome back to another episode. We have got only two weeks left in Tassie and we're going to try and smash it up the east coast. So come along and check out what we can find up there. We are headed today to somewhere that Kane should be so excited about. No, this is my, this now, is number one bucket list in Australia for me. As you all know, Kane <laughs> loves poop. He's been known as a poo Nazi. <laughs> He's often been called a poo-poo head. But today, we are going to take him to the Poo Museum. <laughs> They reckon the main shaft's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I thought it was pretty ordinary, <laughs> actually. Radio, I'm back out of hospital. A couple of days relaxing at uh, New Norfolk Van Park. We're just gonna go in and check out the end of the boat regatta today, maybe grab some lunch, depending on the time and that. We might just pop out home via Richmond just to check out the bridge and that sort of stuff. I'm gonna take it easy over the next few days. James Craig, built in Sunderland, England, 1874. Used to carry general cargo until 1922 and sailed around the world 12 times. It was actually abandoned in Tasmania, so, uh, from 1924 to 1972, it just sat there, restored in 1981, and now it uh, carries passengers. It's got 21 sails. 70 metres long, 31 metres high. It's a pretty decent sort of uh, old tall ship. Love it. The Duifken, 1606. Pretty old ship. Yeah, that's older than the other. I think they called it the Little Dove. Right, I think it's not so cool. I've never seen that before. Well, we are super excited to be at the Hobart Regatta. Looking at all these tall ships, the old masts and everything has been absolutely awesome. They're just all starting to form up in the bay, which it's gonna be fantastic. the grad is on yeah get down and check it out it's not too bad checking out the big old sail ships well, we had an unexpected stop here at new norfolk we again did. we did but it's actually turned out to be a beautiful little town we love it love the caravan park yep. we don't normally stay in van parks but it really worked for us here yep you know, set Trina up with a bit of safety some power so you didn't have to worry and i didn't know how long i was going to be in hospital so <laughs> Why are you filming me? Well, it has been a great stay here at New Norfolk. We have loved it. Um, and they have been so helpful and accommodating while Kane's been in hospital. I'm going to show you a few of the little things. But my favourite, always staying in a van park, is being able to have a nice long hot shower. They do have five minute timers on their showers, but that is plenty. After being in a caravan, I'm going to have about a 30 second shower. Five minutes is luxury. 
loving these. Oh yeah, so nice. Well, there is one good thing about staying at a van park. What might that be? <laughs> I can get all my washing <laughs> done. <laughs> I love get, it. Get all the laundry done. This is the River Derwent and my friend Jilly has swum pretty much from here all the way to Hobart. Yes, she's mad, I know, crazy, but uh, she loves it. She's done it twice now. What a beautiful river. Checking out a convict trail. So we're at Eagle Neck. Yes, yes Eagle Neck and they have the dog line here. So back when the convicts used to try and get off the uh, Port Arthur Island, they had to come up through here, it was the easiest way. And uh, we haven't seen it, but we're gonna go and check it out. It's supposed to be pretty gnarly, some big ferocious dogs, and uh, not very friendly for the poor old convict trying to escape. <laughs> wow. Check out the officer's quarters when you're at Eagle Neck. Um, supposed to be, well, they say it's the oldest military building still standing in Australia. Uh, they set up here because the Eagle Neck was about 100 metres wide, which was the thinnest part from the Port Arthur Island there, the penal colony, and it was really known as the key um, to freedom for all the convicts on, on board. So they set up the officers here, had a garrison, set up dogs uh, to stop them sort of getting across, even though some did in the 45-year uh, history or something, I think it was running. But yeah, this is an amazing little old building. It's changed hands many times and uh, now it's back for us just to walk through for free, check it out. Be gentle, it is definitely an old decaying building, but it's awesome to check it out. They chose to protect it um, and keep all the different layers because there were so many different layers of the building from all the different people that have lived in it. That was pretty cool to actually see that. Yes. I would definitely agree. Like I said, there's a lot of layers on that building. It's an awesome little old building. Like I said, supposed to be the last remaining Australian military uh, barracks. And uh, well worth a visit to check in. Check it out. Well, they reckon 18 of these absolute brutish looking dogs, which weren't well looked after. 18 of them set exactly like this in little spots across the water. Um, were there to protect Eagle Neck. Uh, one here, this replica, it looks like a beast. They mounted them all on bloody white cockles so they was lit up at night and it was easy to see. But yeah, wow, this is uh, nasty stuff. Tessellated pavers, is that right? Yep, pavement. Pavement. It actually looks like someone long ago has uh, built on there and made all these pavers. Pretty, pretty specky. I tell you what, it is really hard to imagine that this stuff here wasn't sort of like man-made. Uh, I'll be honest, I actually thought that was a convict-made thing <laughs> back in the day. But it's all a la natural, I hear, just part of the Earth's uh, wondrous formations and things that happen over a million years. Just uh, goes to show how tiny a speck we really are in the entire scheme of things. We're uh, going to check out the uh, Port Arthur coal mines, the uh, penal colony ones. And we're just going down to the main settlement just to check it all out. So uh, what do you say, Trina? Um, I read on Wiki Camps that if you don't want to pay to go to Port Arthur, then come check out here. Look, I don't think Port Arthur is that a deer for what it is. No, Port Arthur is absolutely amazing. It. Definitely but, good Port um, Arthur. But obviously this is meant to be pretty good, so let's go check That's it out right. and see. We definitely will. Okay, apparently this chain that is along this building is that one metre equals five, five years. Five years. And as we follow it through, it'll actually take us through two centuries. Two centuries of our... Of history. And That's they said right. if you want to go back to the prehistoric time, it would when go down. When humans first were here, yep. 12 kilometres down. 12, 12 kilometres? Yep. Oh, 12 to the kilometres. Earth, to go Holy dooly. That's a long time. Yeah. 1834, the mine started. 
1901, the mine had its last recorded leasehold put on it. Uh, I did read that in the 1920s they started moving uh, a lot of the stone and timber from here to be used in farmhouses and that sort of stuff. So it was pretty much all confunct by uh, 1920. They said that they had six per cell, but there's no way that can be right. No way you could fit six in a cell. Mm. I'm gonna check the fact. Six people in there? Sleeping? Living? Oh my god. Oi, Wanker, what are you doing? Let me out! <laughs> no, you're too naughty! Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm getting out anyway! What has blown us away is that we know that these are convict ruins. We know that convicts lived here, but the view from here is amazing. Very similar to Port Arthur, beautiful view, but horrendous conditions. It would have been so hard living in these horrible conditions with such a beautiful view. This one must have been a bit more uh, important, this building, because it's got some elaborate stonework above the doorways and archways. Solitary confinement. No big spiders in here. Oh wow. It's a lot of domey brick block. Actually it looks nicer in here than it does in the other cells that we went inside. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they thought that. It looks all whitewashed. And well, it is actually really small and it's actually very well built with the curve. Mm. But yeah, uh, I don't know, maybe working in the mine itself was a mongrel job and you'd probably rather spend your days in here. It looks... Looks like they had air holes in the back here so they could breathe. I'm just wondering if they could talk to their mates on the other side. I'm not quite sure, but... Hey, uh, it's solitary. You're not allowed to talk to anyone? <laughs> no, but th this wasn't like their, uh, their other penal one, which was uh, the silent prison, which is the new prison. It was terrible, but yeah. That's how dark it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, it would have been under candlelight if you even had any light. Well, we just discovered that, no, it's not the cell back and back for the air. They've actually made little holes like this in the walkways that lets air through. So it lets air through in the cell behind here. And then this one here, the holes in the back of it, the same deal again, out the back, there's another hole. So that's how they uh, breathe and get air, I suppose. So a bit of fresh air circulation. So they did sort of think a little bit of the convicts, you know, you obviously want to keep him alive so he can get the coal out. Oh, it's well worth the look. It is crumbling down. I really it's do free. I really do appreciate they let us still walk around. It'd be great if people didn't oh. touch everything so it didn't fall down. They're doing a great job holding it up. They like are. All the supports and that. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, super effort. Thank you. And we're going to move on. Super impressed. They actually rake all the leaves off the path, which is fantastic. Nice and clear walk. <laughs> and what, what were you saying? Well, I said it keeps someone employed. Hopefully they employ a convict to do it. <laughs> There's a lot of them around. Well, that was a little bit more specky than we thought, yeah, the uh, that is uh, cool. air hole. It's like a well. They've dug a really nice round hole. A very deep well. It's very deep. And it's probably about three metres wide, maybe. I, like I said, I definitely didn't pace it out, but it's a lot bigger than I was expecting. It's definitely hang on to your glasses <laughs> type of work. Yeah. Don't drop shit down there. The, this way, Trina. Or this way. 
Nah, this way I reckon. <laughs> too many roots that way. <laughs> way too much rooting over that way. I like the rooting way. Super good news for me. We, well Trina, wants to see the main shaft. <laughs> so, I can show her the main shaft. So excited. Of the coal, Yay. the coal mine, you idiot. Really? We're doing a, we're doing PG YouTube. <laughs> Did you forget to tell yourself that? <laughs> uh, yeah. They reckon the main shaft's pretty spectacular. Yeah, I thought it was pretty ordinary we're, actually. We're <laughs> Just showing Trina my main shaft. <laughs> Sadly, I'd say over the years of rain, non use, and that, the uh, main shaft has all collapsed in on itself. You can see where they've got the entry and uh, the big sandstone blocks and everything. Still well worth a look. Okay, so we have just done the coal mines, sort of about near Lime Bay and the Tasman Peninsula. There is signs everywhere talking about the walks and like some of them are two hours long. Yeah, they're pretty big. You can actually drive to each you spot can just about. You drive to a fair bit of it, yes. So, so the main one. The, with the air, yep, the air um, shaft. Hole, yep, the main shaft and the. Where they live, the right, convicts yep. live. So you can drive to all of those and they're like then only about 10, 15, right. or 10 minute walk, I'd no. say most of them. So uh, yeah, don't get stressed out about big walks. You can, it's quite easy. Well worth doing. Come to Tasman Peninsula, Port Arthur. Get over and check this one out too. It's pretty yeah, specky. Pretty cool. Just checking out Nabina, or what was originally known as Wedge Bay. Uh, it was built back in the convicts day. Jetty was here, more for agriculture. So whatever they did on the island in regards to agriculture was taken off here in Jetty from boats from this Jetty and probably shipped back to Hobart town. Wow, they run a pretty elaborate semaphore system, which was a system of guiding boats or which boats were where or whatever, right across this Tasman Peninsula back into Hobart. So there's a lot of these towers on here. So my bad, it wasn't just a way of guiding boats in particular. It was actually for sending messages. It was so a communication system. It was, and they said they could, they could get uh, a message from here to Hobart in 15 minutes. So Port Arthur to Hobart. Yeah, Port Arthur. That's where we are, Port Arthur. That's pretty good. Yeah, super good. Back, <laughs> back in the 1800s, <laughs> 1800s. Yeah, just on poles with little flags, flags and, and symbols and that on them. And yeah. different things. And, yep. Yeah, so that's a super duper little system. And they use the good convicts. They use them under the supervision of the military. Yeah. Well, it's been an absolute ripper day checking out the Tasman Peninsula. Sun setting in the background, looks fantastic. We're just going to sit back and enjoy it and uh, catch us all when we uh, head off to our next awesome destination. Okay, <laughs> we are headed today oh, yeah. to somewhere that Kane should be so excited about. No, this is my, this now, is number one bucket list in Australia for me. As you all know, Kane <laughs> loves poops. He's been known as a poo Nazi. <laughs> He's often been called a poo poo head. But today we are going to take him to the poo museum. The poo-zium. Uh, the poo that... Let's go, let's, let's check go, it out. Let's check it out. We're... The poo museum. The poo museum. He's off. He's going. He's at the museum. I should ice this. <laughs> He's sucking bad. He is shit at this. <laughs> Get the palm. 
You should have this. <laughs> I, I do poos. <laughs> I don't know poos. We talk about them all the time. <laughs> I'm obviously shit at shit. <laughs> Do you want to know what Katrina got? She's good at it. I got eight out of the twelve. She does it all the time. She does it all the time. How can you not be good at it? <laughs> so rude. Okay, this is really testing his poo knowledge of what type of poo. This is. What type of poo is that? It's quoll. We reckon it's quoll. Quoll. Ready? You open it. Oh yeah. Oh. Now, we, now we know this one came. That's Tassie, this one here. Tassie, Tassie devil poo because we've been hunting for them we've the whole time. We've been on that. The so let's, let's, let's flip it up. Oh yeah. Definitely Tassie. That's, that's a no brainer. Okay, now this one here. Yeah, no, this is a. Um, We're debating this one. That is a. Um, I'm thinking Bandicoot. That is a. Um, okay, what do you think? Um, Going He's researching. More researching. And more researching. With that possum's being present, yes, that is a. Um, let's We're go waiting with here. A baton. A baton, okay. Little <laughs> baby run. That's a koala. <laughs> oh, obviously, we don't know koalas. <laughs> Absolute nightmare. I always check to make sure there's no snake in my toilet. <laughs> 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 I'm one of those kids in the shop. I'll press this all day and annoy everybody. <laughs> So we've just done the museum. It was amazing. It was actually really good. There is a lot of information in there that's genuine. Oh, I sucked hard on the quiz. Um, the lady who owns it has put so much work she into has. it and yep. made it fun, interesting, yes. informative. So make and sure you come and have a look. Make sure you go to the toilet to do a poo, oh, yeah. <laughs> do a poo because it's like a museum in itself yeah, in there. Just even have a look in the toilet. It's worth it. <laughs> it's the only time you're ever uncomfortable if you want to do a poo because there's that much poo information around a lot of stuff looking at you <laughs> but if you're in richmond do not skip this do yep. not miss it make sure you go and check it out get on to the poosium <laughs> fun fact in sydney they sent a couple of guys bowen and collins down to tasmania to find a place to settle bowen found Rids risden's cove which uh Collins wasn't happy with, so he went to Hobart Town and uh, settled in Hobart Town. Ridston's Cove, I think, was 1803. Hobart Town, 1804. Collins, I think, was the better person because Hobart's quite a nice little spot. Oh, check mm. out this. This is like a, what is it, old Hobart Town? Yeah, it's town? the miniature old Hobart Town of what it was like, 1820s. And they used all historical records, plans and everything. Now, I thought, you know, when I first looked at it, how, like, how's this going to take me more than five minutes to walk around? But they have a challenge. You have to find certain <laughs> people, which that keeps coming no, busy for ages. Sad. But just looking at all the model people and it's, all the different things they're doing is It is amazing. really well set out. And look, like I said, it was 1820s. The whole landscape has pretty much changed. So I stood ages looking, oh, but I was there. Well, I can't recognise some of this stuff. But it is awesome. Make sure you get and check yeah, this one out. Yeah, definitely worth checking out. Like today what it looked like in 1820. Keeney's Dairy and the uh, hospital, the old hospital. Which is in the same spot. Which is in the, is yep, this is in exactly the same spot. Well, holy dooly, check out the bridge, 200 years old. It is amazing. I love <laughs> old bridges. So Fantastic. Cool. Well done, Richmond, for preserving it. 
Richmond Jail behind me, it's Tasmania's oldest jail in its original state. Has not been modified, they've preserved it in its original condition. You can check it out for 12 bucks each. And uh, everything in Richmond's bloody awesome. So get yourself to Richmond, check out Regman. Yeah, unlike Kane, who's like, hey, if we can just pass that off, can't we? Uh, you could... Make sure you go there. You could probably stay here a day yeah, easily. Yes, so definitely a day. After spending a great time exploring Richmond, we've headed an hour up the road for our next stopover. Well, as the sun sets on another beautiful day, we are going to end this episode here. So as always, we really love your help and support. So please, like, subscribe, follow us along. Come back for next week because we are heading over to an island. But where? We're already on an island. Come check it out. Is this my best angle? Stop recording. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Stop. Stop. This is. Stinky, stinky wallaby just on the side. I tried to do all that talking with that, but <laughs> ah, I think did you uh, fluff, Trina? Nope, no fluffs here. I think she needs a smack bottom. <sighs> really? <laughs> Not the sort of smack bottom uh, I had in mind. No. Kane showing me his shaft. Are you serious? Can you handle it? That's just gross. So, since I'm oozing romance, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, see ya. <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> it's gonna take me a while. <laughs> so nasty. <laughs> Wind up windows, no power windows. <laughs> so sorry. <sighs> That is crispy out there. <laughs> Old Tasmania, just as soon as the sun goes, woo, brr. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have to pull out the bloody jumper again. Jumper on, jumper off. Uh, Night time comes, diesel heated tonight. Maybe a little snuggle. Are you still, I can't get, where's my window? Oh, sorry. I can't get away from you. Sorry, I thought you were interested in a little snuggle. <laughs> a little special cuddle? No. <laughs> Something a little nice? Oh, do you want a present? I got a present for you. Oh, I love that present.